Hello everybody, this is Dr. Novak. Welcome to my channel. What I'm going to be talking about is uh, the Beta container out in the Lanai. I'm going to be redoing it, actually making a plenum. If you recall my video on it, I actually took sand and placed it completely on the bottom and filled it up with sand. And what I decided to do is make it into like uh, a BCB basket. This is the end pro byproduct of what I made with the beta container. And the reason I have to change it over is because, well, in the mornings it's getting a little cold here in Florida. And this container has got to come in the house. And since I got the Lee's under gravel filter, I figured now will be the best time to change the container over. Uh, the filter fits inside the container perfectly. There'll be, uh, it's about a half inch high, the Lee's filter is, and the way the container's designed, there'll be maybe about an inch of space there. So it'll make a nice little plenum. I've always done that with all my containers. No hot matter how big or small, I've always added a plenum. This one I'm going to add a slow moving plenum, so that long tube will be cut down to about three inches, because I won't need all that tubing. And uh, I think that uh, me changing it over is going to be the right thing to do. Now, I will say I used the sand in the container. And when I pulled it apart, I had algae problems. And when I pulled it apart, there was uh, no blackening of the sand or anything. But if you remember, the, the spigot also went to the very bottom of the container to pull the water from the, through the sand from the bottom of the container. There were some roots already at the bottom of the container, so that showed me that the plants were growing. And I was just dealing with so much algae problems. And four times I tried to clean out the algae, and it came back constantly, so I'm going to redo it and make it with a slow-moving plenum instead of just putting the sand at the bottom of the aquarium. Now, this is the spigot I was talking about, in case you're new that I made. So when the sand was placed into the container, it would actually suck the water through the sand and then empty it if I did a water change. Instead of just putting sand at the bottom and there's no way to really bring water through the sand, this is one way I thought of doing it. I uh, I think that's what maybe helped it so the sand wasn't black after about two months of being set up. I tried to replace the drain valve with a screen like this, and believe it or not, this didn't work. It seemed to clog up too quickly because it's too small, and I had to put the drain valve in that I originally came up with. So this won't work if you just put a screen or something over the hole. The next thing I did is to insert the under gravel filter, the leaves to fit in the bottom there, uh, I actually had to heat it up under uh, hot water, you know, from the faucet, just to make it a little more pliable. And then it was able to squeeze into the container by bending it a little bit. It didn't do any damage to it. The tube is about six inches long. I actually cut that down to about three, three and a half inches. So I don't have a the six inch tube poking out of the bottom any longer. So after cutting the tube down, uh, I put the drain valve back in. This is the same drain I used with the sand. And this is how come... Uh, I, it wasn't able to clog because I have a fine net over all the holes and everything. And this seemed to work out very well. So I'm going to use it again. I put a cap on the small bubbler because when I pour the kitty litter in, I don't want kitty litter going down the tube, filling up the bottom of the plenum that I'm making. Okay, now cleaning out the kitty litter. Believe it or not, if you put the kitty litter in a big bucket, like a five-gallon bucket, and you're going to clean, you know, so much of it out, 
that really you'll sp spend all day just like you do with the sand stirring it around emptying it the best way i found to clean kitty litter when i do it is i take some put it in a bucket uh, get it all wet, dump it out a couple of times the water, then fill it back up. And I just scoop it out with a net, a fish net. And as you can see by the photo, it looks like just normal gravel. This is the bait kitty litter. This is what it should look like, the bait kitty litter. The stuff that I use here in Florida is uh, whiskers and tails, unscented, and it's baked. It's non-clumping, and someone told me the reason they have to have kitty litter like this is because uh, kittens cannot have scented kitty litter, and they can't have any of the kitty litter that has uh, chemicals or in it or anything. So they have to sell just plain old kitty litter, basically for kittens, until their immune system builds up, and then they can have scented kitty litter. But anyway. Uh, it's pretty simple to do, to just clean out the kitty litter by scooping it in a nice net, clean it out. Uh, you can squeeze the net at the bottom with your hand a little bit, but you know, it's like any other substrate. What I mean is you, you had ADA substrate, you had the Flubel su substrate for your uh, plants, you have to treat it as that. It's not going to be like gravel real hard. So it can be crushed if you put enough pressure on it. But it's not going to be the other kitty litter that hasn't been baked that's going to turn into mush or mud. This is the kind you are looking for. I know people in other countries, they seem to have problems finding this particular kitty litter. Sometimes you can go with oil dry or safety zorb that has been baked. And what you come up with is, is these granules. These will act the same way as laterite. It is a crystalline structure that will attract the ions out of the water. So therefore, uh, for those of you who like the way it cosmetically looks, you can use this as a substrate. Once you put it in the net and clean it out real good and rinse it and wait until the water's clear, basically that's it. You have cleaned the kitty litter. Um, using the other stuff that hasn't been baked, it's just going to keep rinsing out of the net and turn in the mush. And you know then you have the wrong kitty litter. And it's funny that... Um, I just saw a video where a guy's doing like six different substrates. One that he never uses, of course, is kitty litter. Because here in the United States, a whole 20-pound bag of kitty litter costs $5.98. So you can see now where manufacturers and other hobbyists do not want you to know about kitty litter that it could be used as a substrate if you get the right kind. It can be used literally as 100% of your substrate. You make a plenum out of it. You can use it as 100% plant plants in it. And you would be amazed how great your plants grow without adding any uh, additives. You don't even have to add really laterite to it. Because if you're going to be adding iron right to your aquarium, it will absorb the iron because your plenum is moving the water through it very slowly, and that iron then will get into the substrate. So in this case, with the plenum, you don't really need to add laterite because if you're adding iron substitute, such as Seachem's iron, uh, like I do, you don't really need to add the laterite as a backup. The kitty litter will be enough. So you can make your substrate three inches, four inches, all using kitty litter. Now you understand why people hate it. You understand now why people don't want you to know about it. They don't want to test it because it costs $5.98 for a 20-pound bag compared to maybe $20 or $30 or more, $40, for a little 10, 15-pound bag of substrate 
uh, additive for your plants when it's not needed. So you can really kind of see why people hate me doing videos showing you that you can use 100% kitty litter as your substrate. In fact, I found it to be easier than sand to clean. I'm being honest with you. I had that sand that I put into uh, the beta container, and it took me about a half hour to 45 minutes to get it clean. And even then, it was not 100% clean. Okay, no matter what I did, it would not get 100% clean. Where the kitty litter, I would say 98% clean. You maybe it will have a little residue, but you know, when I set the tank up and got the bubbler going, the tank cleared right up within a matter of hours. By the next morning, it was clear as, uh, you know, it looked like glass, like gin was, was in there. But uh, this is what I decided to do to start the new bed aquarium so I can bring it into the house. So here it is, done, completely done. I cut the lift tube down from six inches to, like I said, three, three and a half inches. So it's not, it doesn't have to poke out all six inches. And uh, that's, that's it. Uh, once it's been uh, cleaned and everything, I'll, I'll show you the bottom. That's the kitty litter. As you can see, the tubing's been done. And just a little bit of kitty litter got out the bottom. This is dried, of course, but th that's what it should look like. And there's your plenum at the very bottom of the container. Okay, so here it is, completely finished. This is uh, today. I just took this today, so it's only been set up a few hours. I used water out of the goldfish aquarium. And as you can see, it looks clear. Now, yes, the bubblers are bubbling a little more than I want, but right now I'm just trying to get the bacteria established into the kitty litter. And look, it doesn't make a bad substrate. But this is the baked kitty litter. There's no laterite in here. It's just basically a plenum. And that's it. Those are the same plants as I had in the very beginning, I, I cleaned them off a little bit. You see a little algae still stuck to one of the crip leaves. I'll probably get some more crip. But anyway, that's uh, about the whole gist of the thing. So if you wanted to use a substrate, if you don't want to use sand, a very cheap alternative and good plant growth medium is kitty litter. Uh, this is the whole thing I've been trying to show people that uh, people don't want you to know this because if you can use a substrate like this and it will grow plants great, then how are they going to make money, you know, selling you a $30 bag of substrate? And look at that. It doesn't look bad. Now, this is the bake kitty litter. So it's completely different than the non-baked. It will hold together better. It's clay and it will grow the plants. After about a month or two, the roots are gonna be all the way down to the bottom of this container with these plants, just like it does with every other uh, basket or container I've ever made or planted aquarium I made with kitty litter. But I've tried to show everybody, yes, you can use the the medium you want, but this is a cheaper alternative. Anyhow, uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time, uh, this is Dr. Novak, and thank you for watching.